Today we fly over Klaipeda, Lithuania's third largest city, and its only port. This time, we show not the side of Klaipeda most tourists see, though. The historic old town is further to the north. Yet, here is the Klaipeda that most of its inhabitants live at. This is the long southern extension of the city, built under the Soviet occupation, in the 1960s, 1970s, and 1980s. In that era, Klaipeda population has expanded fourfold, from 45,000 to 203,000 people, as both rural Lithuanians and people from Russia, Ukraine, and Belarus, were moved in, mostly to work in the port-related, and supporting industries. The districts of southern Klaipeda, were all anchored on the three main north-south thoroughfares. Originally, all the districts looked eerily similar to each other. Each of these neighborhoods were built up with hundreds of low-quality Soviet apartment blocks. All the apartment buildings in each entire district are built on just several different designs, for example, in the southernmost districts, there are five-story and ten-story versions of similar-looking buildings, essentially copy-pasted on the city map. The interiors of these buildings are full of small flats, each of them also with the same design. They are plagued by the same issues, thick walls where you can hear your neighbor word for word, energy inefficiency. In many of these apartment blocks, there is also a lack of neighbor relations, or maintenance of common areas, as the inhabitants are, all too often, too different to find a common ground among them. That said, times have been changing. After Lithuania became independent in 1990, people were able to refurbish their homes. Satellite dishes appeared all over, while many balconies were converted into small rooms to expand the minuscule flats at least a little bit. Large open spaces in between the apartment blocks are now overfilled with cars, which are no longer a luxury in Lithuania. Looking from above, it is thus often difficult to distinguish a courtyard from a side street or an alley. In order to combat the energy inefficiency of these apartment blocks, they are getting renovated through a Lithuanian government-sponsored plan. All in all, except for the irregular grid layout, the Klaipeda Soviet districts are similar to those in any other Lithuanian, or ex-Soviet, city. However, unlike some areas of Vilnius and Kaunas, the Soviet boroughs of Klaipeda were not skipped by the progress. Many of the city's modern flagship projects have been taking place here, rather than in the historic downtown. Acropolis, the Klaipeda's largest modern mall, 75,000 square meters, has been built at one of the main intersections in southern Klaipeda. The other malls are here as well. So is the Klaipeda Arena, the city's main basketball and concert venue, constructed for the 2011 European Basketball Championship. Seating 5,500 spectators, this arena hosts many gigs and sporting events, as well as the home games of the local Neptunas basketball team. Southern Klaipeda is also home to many new residential developments. The most famous among these is Pilsotas, the tallest apartment building in Lithuania. Built in 2008, it is 112 meters tall, and has 34 floors. The owners of the prestigious apartments in the middle and upper floors may see the lagoon, the entire width of the Coronian Spit, and the sea, through their enormous windows. Less affluent people live in modern new buildings nearby, which are still a great improvement from the aging Soviet-era flats. If not for the financial crisis of 2008, the most magnificent addition of the area, 170 meters tall Corsa's apartment tower, would have already crowned this new neighborhood. The massive Soviet infrastructural projects, that were the beating heart of southern Klaipeda, still survive, albeit adapted to the market economics. Among them are various wharfs for loading container ships and bulk carriers, as well as the formidable international ferry terminal in the extreme south of Klaipeda. Opened in 1986 for a railroad ferry service between the Soviet Union and East Germany, it still greets ships from the other shores of the Baltic Sea. After independence, Lithuania continued to expand the port of Klaipeda, adding an LNG terminal, to ensure a free supply of gas from a non-Russian source. It has also built in another ferry terminal. Smaller ferries connect Klaipeda to the Koronian Spit. Soviets had destroyed nearly every single church in Klaipeda. As the Soviet regime was atheist, they did not allow to build any church either. This spiritual vacuum was closed soon after independence in the 1990s. The old town churches were not rebuilt, however. Instead, 
It was Southern Klaipeda that received the largest of the new churches, as it is now Southern Klaipeda where most of Klaipeda people live at. Here we see a new religious center that was built with the Roman Catholic St. Joseph Church and Michael Russian Orthodox Church. They are built along the massive thoroughfare, still named Shtatibaninku after the construction workers, a common street naming practice in the Soviet Union. However massive and important the southern Klaipeda is, the most impressive parts of Klaipeda are in its downtown and its seaside. These we, however, explore in the other true Lithuania videos. If you like these drone tours over Lithuania, please click the like button, so more people would see what Lithuania has to offer.